his pro debut. See the kicks coming early from Kaminsky trying to keep Gradchkar at range. Gradchkar does have a bit of size advantage. Again, as you mentioned, Kubinski normally a lightweight at 155. Took this fight last minute in order to step up a weight class and get some cage action. Gradchkar now on top of Dubinsky, pressing him down. Jeremy, you see here, just trying to advance the position, take his opponent away from the cage, create some space, and it looks like he might be trying to secure the mount here. Well, and just trying to pressure down and keep his, and now a nice job taking the back by Peter Gradchkar. He was trying to put the pressure down to keep uh, his opponent from standing up, but now on the back, a dangerous position. And for, uh, he's able to get in and work this rear naked choke here. Yeah, Peter Gradchkar is uh, trying to do his best to uh, get in there against Miles or uh, against uh, Roman Dubinsky and, and Jeremy looking to find the choke here and he's got a lot of time to work with but Dubinsky doing a good job of isolating the one arm not allowing the choke to happen. Yeah, Dubinsky, if, if you're going to defend this rear naked choke position, you just have to keep that top arm from locking in around. You also have to keep the hands separate because if Gradchkar transitions to a gable grip, he's going to be in a lot of trouble because he would still put a lot of pressure at the gable grip. Now on top, landing strikes. Again, gradchkar has been in control of this fight right from the get-go. He's still got the back of Dubinsky. One arm in now, and he might be looking to step out here and give up the mount in order to get onto the side with the arm in choke. He does exactly that. Can he put enough pressure on to end this fight? He does have that side arm triangle, but good work by Dubinsky trying to push that elbow through to create the space. Lots of pressure being put on by Gradchkar, though. He wants to get all the way to the side. Now the cage cutting him off. Good work by Gradchkar using the choke now to be able to land to the side of Dubinsky's head. And again, driving through, trying to choke out his opponent, now creating that space again. Last time it was Dubinsky able to get back towards the cage enough to stop the choke. This arm in side triangle choke is now given up by Gradskar. Dubinsky hangs in tough and survives the submission attempt. Well, Dubinsky, a top level guy and, and able to see when those position is coming to be able to get that elbow in and, and defend that technique. But again, Gradskar very heavy on top, putting all his weight on Dubinsky and Dubinsky having to carry the much heavier, bigger Peter Gradskar. Gradskar has been on top for the better part of the last two minutes. Dubinsky holding on underneath, trying to create a bit of a defense, but unable to really mount much of anything beyond just holding Gradskar and not submitting. And uh, so far, so good for Gradskar here in this round number one. Continued downward pressure being put on by Gradskar. And he hasn't really abandoned the, to get to the strikes and get a tall position as he's doing now. He must watch out for a sweep if he puts his feet up like that, but wisely puts his knees back down on the mat. Well, it looks like he was trying to posture up for a second, but Dubinsky grabbing on, bringing him in close, not allowing that space, not allowing his opponent to step or to lean up back and gain any kind of momentum on a punch. Peter Gradchkar on top of Roman Dubinsky. And really, Jeremy, just at this point, as you mentioned before the fight, Gradchkar more of a points fighter and uh, really doing an excellent job of gaining points here in round number one. Well, it's important when, when you are in that style of fighting that you, you have to make sure that you're 100% safe at all times. It's, it's less important to land a big shot at 100% than land, is to land 100 shots at 10% just because you're landing. And it looks like uh, Andy Social has had enough, so he calls him up standing. And uh, we'll see if, if Peter Bradshaw can get this back down to the ground. And he immediately does some up kicks coming now from Roman Dubinsky, but Gradchkar able to get to side control, just short time remaining in the round. Yeah, some nice up kicks there, Jeremy. You start to wonder, is this a, a, a possibility of a 10-8 round? Gradchkar was on top for four minutes, 
did not really, uh, and, and all Dubinsky did was survive round one. Round two action now underway. Roman Dubinsky taking on Peter Grajkar. Grajkar in the black shorts, the camo trunks. For Dubinsky, this round starting like it ended, Jeremy, with Grajkar on top. Yeah, he caught the kick of his opponent and was able to, to take it down. And he really needs to work to stay busy here because if you get called up once in a fight, normally the, the official is going to be really on you to, to be active. And he's got a good position here with side control. And so landing some short elbows now is Peter Grajkar, but he must continue to be active here or Andy Social will call him back standing. Grajkar now with the forearm on the, on the neck of Dubinsky. Just trying to take some of the air away. Now Dubinsky transfers back. Oh, a mount here for Grajkar. Nice pass to get there. Watch for him to, to posture up very briefly just to land the big shots, but he's working on the lower half of the body, trying to secure the hooks in. Now goes back to side control to be able to land those short elbows again. But again, good work by Grajkar being on top of Dubinsky and just continuing the pressure. And it looks like an over anaconda choke attempt here. And there it is, this fight is over. Roman Dubinsky tapping for Peter Grajkar. Grajkar will move to 3-0.